Okay, uh, so in this lab, uh, we're, so we already have those tables that have been created in our previous lab. So we all have our own schema where we have cost table, enroll list table, uh, professor, professor table, and also student table. So uh, we, in last week, we tried to query those tables and also make changes by using the SQL uh, query tools that in Teach Admin, so that's here. Um, so this week, we are going to do the similar thing. So we are also still going to query those tables, but instead of uh, doing those queries in the database or in the uh, SQL editor, we are going to do everything in Python. So, um, so the Python editor that we are going to use is on AWS. So that is called SageMaker. So first, let's log into our Educator uh, account. So Educator, AWS Educator provides free resources where we can try use some AWS services. Uh, so let's go to my classrooms and find out the class, classroom of this class, uh, which is data mining, modeling, and also knowledge discovery. Where you can see we have $50 uh, credits that remaining. So let's go to the classroom. Um, this is a, a virtual environment where you can try to you you can use those fifty dollars credits to learn AWS. And from there, let's go to AWS console. And here we have the similar interface as the for private account. Uh, we're going to use SageMaker. Okay, so you can search SageMaker, and it's showing up here. Um, SageMaker is a machine learning service on AWS. And the reason that we're going, we are using this one is because it has uh, notebook instances that we can um, create and also define the notebook, uh, edit notebook by using the SageMaker. So let's first start the notebook instance. Uh, so it's the best practice that we stop the instance after we are done with lab so that we can save the cost. Um, in the meantime, so remember that we also have the GitHub profile that we created during, during the lecture. So this is a GitHub repository that we created uh, from the, during the lecture, uh, which also is linked to our notebook instance. So. Um, Everything that we did in the instance will be will be can be uh, synchronized or shared to our GitHub repository. So normally it will take uh, two to three minutes so that your instance uh, the instance will be ready. Uh, so before we open the editor, so let's first open the lab. So Jupyter Lab. Uh, the lab is where. Uh, we can organize all our notebooks, uh, especially that we can make sure that we can synchronize to our GitHub repository. So um, every time when I before uh, I open my notebook, so I will go to um, the lab and also I will try to click this one, the pool. Okay, so make sure that uh, we are on the same page as the GitHub. So because I didn't do anything on GitHub side, so and also I'm the only um, author of this repository, so there's nothing changed, so which is great. And next, let's open the editor, so Drupal editor, and that is also a browser-based uh, notebook. And here you can see that we have the same files as we have on GitHub, so we have the le lecture form notebook, uh, configure.ini. This one contains as a connection to our database. So those are the sensitive information. So that one is ignored by GitHub because we defined in the ignore file. So uh, if you go to GitHub, you can see that one is not um, synchronized on GitHub because uh, we have those sensitive information like database, password, uh, host URL, etc., and also license and also readme. All right, so for this lab, let's create a new notebook. So let's say new, and we can use a counter Python 3. So that will be sufficient for this lab. And next, let's change the title. So let's call this one as lab 4. So we know that this is for the lab 4. And 
so the first step will be that we need to establish the connection to our database and also we need to import those Python libraries. So let's add a section name by using the markdown. Uh, so first let's say this is lab 4. So that is a um, level 1 headline. And next let's add a subtitle. So the first section will be import Python libraries and connect to database. Okay, so we need a full Python library. So we need to import uh, three, sorry, pandas, which is used for the data analysis. Uh, we need to import the configure parser, so that is to load the sensitive information from configure.ini file. And also we need the psycopj2, so that is a Python library that um, to make a connection to our PostgreSQL so-called database. So let's run uh, this cell. Okay, and I have a typo, so it should be PSY COPJ2, okay. Okay, and we have this warning, so that's because that this one will be this Python library will be renamed. So for now, we can ignore this warning, so we can just rewrite, <laughs> and the warning is gone. Next, uh, we are going to establish the connection. So let's load the, the information from the uh, PG configure. So I just simply copy and then pass uh, the Python code that is from our GitHub. So uh, if you open our lab file, um, notebook and you will see that we are using the same configuration file and also we are using the same um, uh, connection info so we can you can copy and paste that one to your existing notebook so let's run this and let's run this one okay everything worked and finally let's create the cursor Okay, so those are the uh, preparations for uh, Lab 4. So we import those necessary Python libraries, reload those config info from config.ini, and also we establish this connection, and also we create a cursor. So next, we are going to try to answer those questions in our lab. So uh, let me switch this one to Markdown. So this will be our first question that is to display all the records in a student table okay so display all the records in a student table so let's first define the sql query so sql for the first question that is so let's use a double quotation mark so this is very simple so we just simply select everything from so here you're going to tell your your schema name so mine is demo and table name student okay so i just defined my query query for the first question and next uh, i want to display the table so you can use a cursor or you can use pandas so here i'm going to use pandas um so if you're like me that cannot remember the queries, you can see it is pandas. You can check our previous note so that pandas read SQL query. Okay. Pandas dot read SQL query. And also the first query SQL question one. And also we pass connection. And let's display all the records. Okay, so here I have, you can see I have six students in my student table. So that is for the first question, that's pretty simple. And for the second question, again, I'm going to use another markdown so that can easily tell that, okay, so here I'm going to answer the second question. 
so the second question is that we have to display all the teacher's name and of corresponding course name jointly based on the teacher's email. So if you remember that we have two tables, one is professor table and also one is course table. So we have joined two tables together. So as always, we have defined the SQL statement. Uh, so we did the SQL part in the previous lab. So I'm just copying the SQL code from my previous lab. Okay, so this is the SQL statement. So we select the professor name from professor table and also course name from course table. And we don't need this comma. From professor table in the join course table. And here we define the common keys. So that normally will be primary key equals form key. So here we have professor email on the professor table equals professor email on the course table. So now let's run this SQL code. And actually, so because we can also just copy this data frame. So, so now we are going to view the, uh, the result from the second query. So I just copy it and paste from the previous data frame Python code. And now if I run it, OK, so I can see, OK, the professor name and also course name now have been jointly uh, displayed. OK, and our next question is that we want to create some visualizations. So we want to use a bar chart to show the number of enrolled students in each class. OK, the so number of enrolled students uh, in each class. So if you remember that uh, we did that one in a previous lab, but we uh, we um, we need to find out the class that has the most number of students that have been enrolled. Uh, so here the difference is here in this case we are going to create a visualization. So so this will be um, Q3. So again we need to define the SQL code first. In course so. Remember, we have an enroll list table. So if we count the number of students per course number, and we all know that the number of students enrolled in each course number. And once we have that result, and we can visualize that result by using a bar chart. OK, so that is the idea. So first, let's design the SQL code uh, to do the group. OK, so here is my solution. So we select the cost number. Uh, we can count how many cost numbers are there. So that will be, and also from this enroll list, and also we group by the cost number, um, because cost number are unique. And we can order by the enrolled. So the number is labeled, will be labeled as enrolled. So you can also count uh, the number of students per cost number. So that will also give you, that will give you the same result. So here, let's just define that we count the number of cost numbers grouped by the cost number. OK, and we have the result. And let's first, let's view the result first. So let's see the table. So this is Q3. OK, uh, so now we have two numbers. So for the first course, the same number and also enrolled. And also for the second one, so the same number and also enrolled. OK, so it's a very simple result because I only have few records. Uh, however, we still can create a visualization for this. So let's say df date frame dot plot dot bar chart. So here, uh, the y will equals the, the enrolled. And x will be the labels. So in this case, will be the C number. And now let's try to run it. OK, uh, so now we have this uh, a bar chart. And OK, uh, so that's visualization. So although it's, it's pretty simple, uh, but still it's a visualization. Uh, so let's move on to our next question. So um, Q4. So uh, this question is asking that uh, 
uh, we want to use a bar chart to show the number of calls by each professor. Okay. And actually, so by each professor's name. All right. Uh, so it may sound like first we need to join the professor table with the course table. And then we can create a visualization. So to join two tables, we already have that one. So actually, uh, we can use uh, the Q2. So we can modify the, uh, this a uh, little bit so we can join we can treat the join table as a new table okay so let's let's copy the this sql code and we call it for question four so once we join this one and we can count the cost number okay and next we can group Next, we can group that one by the professor name. Okay, so after the drawing, we can group by professor name. Okay, and order by, so let's, let's count as uh, teaching Number. So let's sort this one by teaching number as well, and let's use descending order. Okay, uh, so let's run this one. And again, as we always did, so let's, so that is Q4. Uh, let's view the data first. Okay, uh, again, it's, it's even just one row because I'm the, the only professor that in that table. Uh, so now if you want to plot that one, so uh, so in this case, uh, the Y will be the professor name. And the, uh, the number <coughs> of Actually, the number will be the teaching number, and also the label will be the professor name. Okay, I think I had a typo. So, yeah, so it should be P name. Okay, yeah, so it's 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 a very weird bar chart because I'm the only professor that in my professor table. Uh, so in your case, if you have multiple professors, so the, the bar chart will look definitely di different. Okay, uh, so the next question is that, so we are going to modify the table. So that is Q5. So we are going to modify the table specifically. Uh, we, we are going to insert a new professor record into the professor table. And also for that professor, we're going to insert new calls for that new professor. Uh, so here, remember that professor and calls are um, one to many relationship. So that means you have to insert the professor record first. And next, you can insert that uh, cost record. Uh, so here, we have defined two SQL statement. So SQL Q5 for the professor. Okay, uh, so here we are going to insert into the professor table. So you have specified the columns. We have professor email, name, and also office, and also the values, so all those corresponding values. Uh, so here actually uh, using string, string format is not necessary because uh, we don't have variables here. We're not passing variables, but just simply those uh, strings. However, um, I just think it's the best practice that when you insert some data, use string format. So in future, when you need to pass variables, you um, uh, so um, it will you will we just follow the same standard or same format. Okay, so let's run this one, and here we are going to use cursor to commit execute this one. So cursor dot execute. 
Okay, and you can also use pandas to do the execution, but um, I just personally I just like use cursor to do the execute. Let's run. Let's try to run it. It looks like there's no errors, so let's um, commit that change. Okay, and let's look at the uh, data very fast. So date frame equals dot read SQL query. Uh, so here, because the query is very simple, so I just uh, type the query in this um, parentheses. So we are select everything from professor. And we pass a connection. And let's see whether or not the professor has been inserted. OK, great. So now the professor record has been inserted. So we just need to uh, do the same thing for the cause. OK, so this will be the cause. OK, so that is the insert statement. So we insert into the cost table, which requires cost number, name, room, and also professor. So we want the new professor to teach this class. So the number will be I new and also new cost name. I just simply call it uh, new cost. And also it will be online. And also we we'll use uh, just the new professor that we just created to teach that class. OK, so let's execute this one. And also, let's put that one here and see if we have errors. OK, that's great. And let's just copy and paste commit that change. And let's see here, we want to check everything from the cost table and see if the cost date table is updated. OK, great. So now we have this. Uh, new cost table, which is now being taught by the new professor. Uh, the next is our last question. So that is um, question six. So here we need to delete a professor. And also we need to update that professor's cost to the corresponding uh, to the new professor. So for example, that I am going, I'm going to retire. So. <laughs> Uh, so and also all the courses that I'm teaching will be taught by this new professor. So how can we do that? So here again, remember that professor and cost table is one to many relationships. So if you want up delete this professor, you have to make sure that this professor is not teaching any courses. So in another way that we have to update the cost table first. So make sure that all the costs are taught are not being taught by the new professor. And next, we can delete that uh, table. We can delete that professor's record. So SQLQ6. So that means we need to update uh, the cost table first. OK, so here we have done the update. Uh, so we update the cost table. We see, OK. So for all the records, we change the P email equals the first one. Actually, that is, um, I should switch this one a little bit. OK, we change all the P values into the new professor P email into the new professor email, where the email equals my email. So by doing that, we will change all the instructor of those courses in of my courses into the new professor. So let's see whether or not that will work. So let's execute this one. OK, uh, so there was a typo, so UP update. See if we can still run the cursor. OK, uh, so because now we have an error, so we have to roll back that cursor to uh, unlock the cursor. OK, so we have to roll back that cursor because we have this error. So hopefully, you don't have this error. 
uh, it is cursor. And now let's and now let's say we can execute this one. Great. Uh, so I'm going to commit command this one out. So because this is not needed, and let's commit that change. Very nice. So now let's say we want to select all the calls. So we can just use this one directly. So now you can see all the professors, all the calls that are now being taught by this new professor. So next, we are going to define that we delete uh, the old professor. So SQL and Q6 professor equals. Okay, so this is the SQL statement. So we want to delete from the professor table where the P email, okay. Professor email equals my email. Okay, again, I'm using stream format. So just, I just want to hope that you uh, you can get used to the stream format in this way. So uh, in the next lab that when we are going to collect data, we need to pass variables to the SQL statement. So, um, um, you will you will do that easier. So let's run this one and let's commit that change. See if we have errors. Nope. And let's commit that change. Okay. And now let's just simply display all the professors. And right now we should have only one professor. Okay. That's great. Okay, so um, that's uh, finish the lab. But before we finish, we should also always close the connection. So close connection. So we say cursor dot close and connection dot close. Okay, so let's close the connection and let's save this. Um, notebook and now we can safely close this notebook if you like you can also shut down that notebook um, and next if we go to our Jupyter lab and we will see that we just created a new uh, notebook okay so we can see we have this new notebook so we confirm the change Okay, and we add a summary that commit. So this is my lab four. And I commit that change. And I push that change to GitHub. Okay, it says success. Uh, so now if we go to our uh, GitHub page, and of this class and now we can see that our lab 4 notebook is now uh, published uh, so we should be able to see all our questions and our answers so for this lab you can just copy this url and submit this url to the on canvas uh, finally so after you have submitted your lab the last thing is keep in mind is that you should always remember to turn off your notebook instance because every time when it is running, so it will cost our credits. So let's turn off the instance. So while this is stopping, so you can now safely log out of the, um, the SageMaker, your AWS console and our SageMaker. Uh, so let's check our credits. Okay, so far so good. So we still have uh, enough credits for the remaining labs.